All right, welcome to this episode of my playthrough of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. We are currently in Vizima, where we have just talked to Emperor Emhirvar Emrys to try and get him to uh, offer some support for the defense of Kaer Morin for the trap that we're trying to lure the Wild Hunt into once we rescue Ciri from the Isle of Mists. Um, em and the Emperor said, yes, I will send a, a, a banner so long as it is led by General Voorhees, and Geralt said, no, not acceptable, and the Emperor was like, well, I'm not gonna budge, and Geralt's like, well, I'm not budging either, so sorry for wasting your time, bye. <laughs> um, and that was the last of our um, quests to go gather support for the defense of Kaer Morhen. I'm running out of side quests to do, so I'm thinking we're probably gonna go to the Isle of Mists right away here, uh, but let's take a look, all right? So, let's take a quick look-see here. Um, yeah, Envoys, Wine Boys is part of Blood and Wine, and Evil's Soft First Touches is part of Hearts of Stone. Secondary quests, Soldier Statuette I can't do because Triss is currently unavailable, likely until after the battle, would be my guess. Uh, these two are both Hearts of Stone. High Stakes is Gwent. Playing Innkeepers is Gwent. Big City Players is Gwent. Master of the Arena, we need to return to Spikarog uh, Arena later to collect our percent of the takings, so time has to pass. Uh, Skellige style is Gwent. Uh, Tower Out of Nowheres is one I might try to take on. Free Spirit, um, yeah, we can head that way. Probably. Uh, Witcher Contracts, um... Level 33 is a little higher than I want to venture right now. It's about five levels above me. Uh, a plea ignored is something I can definitely do. So, yeah, let's do that, because it's level 28, we're level 28. We'll do a plea ignored, then towers out of, tower out of nowheres, and then we'll head off to the Isle of Mists. So, quick um, reminder for a plea ignored, because uh, I got this when I was like level seven or something like that. Like high single digits to maybe low double digits and it's a level 28 quest obviously so didn't do that during his travels Geralt came across a certain letter as he was picking it up he could not help but notice it mentioned something about valuables he decided he would have to be sure to give it a careful read yana come back to me i'm begging you each day is more dangerous than the last there's strange men lurking outside the house watching me carrying weapons i'm afraid they know something about our stash of valuables and are waiting for a chance to rob us or worse I remember what you wrote earlier, that you can't abandon your post now, that they owe you back pay, that if you don't wait till the coin's gone for good. But what would you rather be, a rich widower or a poor husband? You're Hallie. So completed objective is to read the letter you found, which we just recapped. Uh, current objective is to find the valuables in the burned down home using your witcher senses. So it appears things did not go well for Hallie and Yana. And where does this take me? This takes me to Novigrad. No, it, it put the marker on the Novigrad thing on the on the world map, but it's actually down here in Velen. Uh, so we're gonna go to Condyle and follow the road. Come on, game, give me some guidance. Show me the path. And it's basically head south. <laughs> there we go. There's the guidance. It's only 130 distance, so I'm not going to call a roach. I'm just going to run it. Grave Hag, level 28. Ooh, that was a nasty uh, thing.
So that body there is where we found the letter. Grave hag was not a thing at the time. Uh, monster liver, monstrous fang, grave hag's ear. Now there's some, um... Oh, not, not ard, I want igni. Get these honeycombs. Uh, Harval, hunting trousers, rugged saddlebags, Orin's pure silver, and oil. I guess that's all it was. Uh, burned sweet bun and burned bread. Uh, so I guess the level 28 was because of the uh, grave hag, which was not there when I tried before. Uh, it looks like so there's some drowned dead or something like that out there. Uh, fist tech on this body. And I see on the world map, what is that? Is that a guarded treasure or is that a hidden treasure? Okay. Spoils of War, I'm sure I got that. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it doesn't matter. Alright, so now we're going to choose the Tower Out of Nowheres. And take that on. I'll do the um, summary once we actually get to Skellige. up here on on Skellig. Um Yeah, let's go to the Bay of Winds. It, it, I'll have to do some fighting as soon as I get there, but it's the closest, most direct route. So let's do that quick summary. Um, wind whipped and rain battered, Geralt stumbled into a small village on the coast of Anskellig. The foul weather, he learned, had cursed this spot ever since a mysterious tower appeared one morning out of thin air, as if placed by an invisible giant's hand. Intrigued, Geralt decided to investigate. Uh, objective we've completed is talk to the villagers. Current objective is enter the tower. So we talked to the people in um, Uralia, um, which is, I think, the name of the village. And they were just like, yeah, this tower appeared somewhere with a crack of lightning, and, like, the storm hasn't let up since. We opened the door, there was, like, it was like water, but standing up instead of laying flat. Uh, the people who went in haven't come back, so... One of those kinds of situations where mysterious things are happening, and we know not why. Hi, Thor. Because, you know, thunder. No, well, it looks like a normal tower. A little bit of wear. It's a portal. Ha ha ha. And of course we can't go up. 
Yeah, that explains the looks like water, but standing upright, not laying flat. Because, you know, portal. A portal. Shit. <laughs> Closed. Hmm. Looked smaller from the outside. I see a bunch of purple. Intruder detected. Cease your intrusion. Leave at once. Failure to leave when solved. Intruder neutralization commence. Like, can't do anything. Because portal's not there. And we got this golem. Uh, which means I need, uh, Quen. I need to be a lot smarter because he's just ripping through my Quen every time. you're guarding. Talk to the man trapped behind the magic barrier. Uh, Zoria runestone, fiber, lesser Morana runestone, elven steel sword. Over here. I'm in here. Yeah, I'm gonna loot everything first before I do anything. Someone's come to free me. And a famous witcher at that. Thank the gods. I'm damned lucky you happen to be in Kovia. Was it King Tancred who sent you? Or the Society of Magic? Neither. And we're not in Kovir. We're in Skellige. Local folk hired me. See, your towers brought a massive storm to their island. We're in... In Skellige? So we've teleported? Oh, this is much worse than I thought. I wonder if this is his tower. Not sure I follow. Oh, the tower is outfitted with a, a defensive regulatory magic on. What? A defensive system magic. Ensuring only the tower's owner will use it. When it detects an intruder, it locks down all the rooms, denies access. And since neither of us is the tower's owner, 
The golem attacked me, and you're stuck behind bars. How do we evade its other charming features? We must deactivate the defensive regulatory magic on. The tower's prior owner wrote a treatise about removing such defenses. Gottfried's omni-opening grimoire. There must be a copy in the tower. Find it, please. With it in hand, I can try to circumvent the security measures. Send you home and take the tower back to Kavir. You clearly know who I am. I don't even know your name. Seagull Bunce. Mage and sorcerer in residence at the court of Pompvanis. This tower was to be my new home. Bought it at an auction, you see. A tower at an auction? It belonged to Gottfried Stamfeld, a mage of some renown. When he passed on, his heirs auctioned the edifice off. They were all wary, repulsed. None dared see what Uncle Godfrey kept in his coloured jars. If it was their contents that had stripped him of his sense of smell and taken his left eye, they put the tower on the block along with all it contained. The price was unbeatable. I couldn't resist. Seen my share of wonders, but a tower that teleports itself? That's something new. This defensive regulatory magic on tried to access it. Must have heard. Initiated some evacuation sequence. That opened the portal and jettisoned us through to Skellige. This, in turn, naturally generated electromagnetic disturbances. Hence the storm. The storm I promised to dispel. Then you must find Gottfried's omni-opening grimoire. The corpses over there. Folk from the village nearby, right? They came in a few days past. I was surprised to see their garb. But it just never entered my mind we might be in Skellige. There were just a few, led by a druid. The tower warned them. They failed to heed. Folk on On Skellig usually laugh in the face of warnings. If the tower had asked nicely, then offered them a horn of mead, they might have left then. Right. Time to get out of here and send this tower home. Where do I look for Gottfried's treaties? Any ideas? Hmm, the library might be a logical place to start. The key should be in the laboratory. Where's that? As you enter the room opposite, you'll see the laboratory to your left. The library straight ahead. But remember, you're an intruder. The tower is certain to want to stop you. Make things difficult at the least. We'll see who breaks first. Smash that barrier. Os bayou, if it is Hey, barrier's gone. Also, that just sound this just seems all real interesting. This is actually is like a really fun premise for a quest. Intruder in tower. Aqueous countermeasure. In effect. Yeah. <laughs> Aqueous countermeasures. Like, you know, water. There's some yellow thing over there. Or something glowing yellow over there, anyway. bookshelf of course can't imagine the books are terribly good being underwater conjunction of the spheres something we've read many times like in the past I think he said to turn right. Could be wrong. <laughs> of course, it's a it's a world map.
I can't go this way, so that's pretty straightforward. Beast teleportation. Interesting. And of course it's Al Ghul, so I need Axie. Gargoyle, of course. And a werewolf. Lovely. Like it just seems to want to throw thing after thing after me. A cow. Its grand defense is a cow. Alright. And of course my silver sword is damaged, let's take a moment to fix it. Monster Eye, Werewolf Hide, Monster Essence, Werewolf Saliva, Diamond Dust. Gargoyle Heart, Powdered Monster Tissue, Elemental Essence, Gargoyle Dust. Let's take a moment to meditate. There's something glowing over here. Lesser green mutagen, raw rotting flesh, monster blood, algal claw, algal bone marrow. Okay. Some bread on this. I don't know if it's a body or a mannequin or what, but whatever. Torn to bits. That's probably a Skelliger that uh, came before. I'm gonna make sure there's no treasure chest or anything over here. Does not look like it. Alright, so let's follow the actual marker. Sending me up into this area with lots of yellow glowing things. Tucson, a duchy out of tales of fantasy and wonder. I almost guarantee we've read that. More bookshelves and stuff. But this is what I actually want. Key to library. Must be the key. Enter the library. Oh, there's uh, something up here, apparently. Just, uh, general loot. Intruder. 
intruder in library. Collection integrity compromised. How's it going to try and stop me this time? We've got a bunch of books glowing red. So of course I got to check out all the yellow stuff first. Uh, meteorite ingot, cured leather, linen, coal, resin, diamond dust, and leather straps. Looks like he's suffocated. Horrible way to die. Suffocated. Uh, behind the great veil and some orins. Uh, of the many demons which reside in the outer spheres, Himes are among the most dangerous. Other demons usually must take on concrete living form, be it man or beast. Himes, on the other hand, appear in our world in their own immaterial form, which is invisible to all save their chosen victim. Himes feed on fear, regret, a sense of guilt, guilt, in a word, on negative emotions, and since they are eternally hungry, they provoke these emotions in the humans they torment. These demons cannot be exercised. A man a, he, a Heim takes as a victim is lost and will inevitably succumb to madness and then death. Except, you know, we've defeated a Heim. That's a Vela's runestone and some crowns. Alright, well let's start closest to the door and then work our way through. Who's who among Kaviri sorcerers? Alchemy for Household Dilemmas, Volume 3. This isn't it. Gottfried's Omni Opening Grimoire. Gottfried's Omni Opening Grimoire. This is it. Commencing <coughs> Annihilation. Okay, so we gotta get out of there. Tower wants to gas me. Commencing Annihilation is just such a dramatic way of saying it. <laughs> Alright, so let's let's actually read this thing. Um, oh, it'll be under, under quest items. There we go. Uh, the Defensive Regulatory Magicon, or DRM for short. Ha 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 ha. Uh, that that's a, a lovely little game developer joke um, right there because DRM when it comes to video games um, and other digital media such as songs movies TV shows things like that stands for digital rights management uh, it's the kind of thing that um, if you buy a song from one online store and download it it won't work on a computer that isn't signed into your account uh, for that online store using their player tool or whatever. Um, or it's, it's the thing that kind of prevents piracy of video games uh, and makes it so that the game doesn't work if it's not a legitimate copy. Uh, so uh, it's <laughs> the fact that it's a thing that digital distributors use to protect their property uh, is, is called DRM and then the, this defensive mechanism of the tower is DRM is a hilarious, very, very geeky joke on the parts of CD Projekt Red. Uh, so the Defensive Regulatory Magicon, or DRM for short, belongs to the above-mentioned group of the longest-lasting, most effective, and hardest-to-break defensive mechanisms. In order to recognize the individual administering it, it makes up a portal mounted at the entrance of the area it is to defend. This portal passes streams of magical energy through the body of the person entering and can, in the blink of an eye, determine if this person has the corporeal signature, eyeball structure included, of the entitled administrator. As a result, the only unauthorized individuals that can possibly hope to enter are mimics. Uh, DRM thus makes for an extremely effective and near unbreakable security measure, but you are in luck, for you hold in your hands the key to bypassing it, namely the present tome, Gottfried's Omni Opening Grimoire, or GOG for short, in the pages you follow will find innumerable methods for deactivating DRM or even better bypassing it altogether. Okay, so this is a m very multi-level joke here. Um, GOG is also a joke and a reference. Um, so there's a website, GOG.com I believe. Uh, it stands for Grand Old Games. Um, in this 
particular case, it, it's Gottfried's Omni Opening Grimoire. GOG.com is what CD Projekt did before they started making their own games. Uh, and they still do it, uh, but now they just also make their own games, as, and that's what most people know them for. And <laughs> CD Projekt, the company that made this game, The Witcher 3, uh, got started with GOG by distributing cracked copies of games. So basically what it was, because they're based out of Poland, um, and there was a situation where the distributors of, of vid video games, for whatever reason, just didn't distribute to Poland. For whatever reason, like, they, they just didn't. So there were these people in Poland who wanted to play video games, but no distributor actually brought games to Poland. So I think it's, uh, two guys started the company, and what they did is they they basically got started uh, taking these video games that weren't being distributed in Poland, breaking the digital rights management, the DRM of the game, and distributing it in Poland through GOG.com. And because there was no official distribution in Poland, this was quasi-legal. <laughs> so... This whole note is just an absolute self-referential ref like joke about the origins of CD Projekt and CD Projekt Red and how they, they used GOG to disable DRM. <laughs> and that's how this company got started and now they're making video games as big and massive and polished as The Witcher 3 all on their own. They're not just taking games that other companies have made and, and breaking the DRM and distributing it on GOG. <laughs> so this is hilarious to me. Very geeky, but it's hilarious. Well, there's a glitch. We can hear the thunderstorm, even though we're still in the tower. But I'm going to call an end to the episode here. You know the drill. Click over there. Join me next time as we bring the uh, Gottfried's Omni opening grimoire to the mage and break the DRM with GOG. <laughs> See you then.